My friends, have you ever found yourself questioning where God is in the midst of your trials? Ever wondered why difficulties seem to persist in your life? Today, let's begin by anchoring ourselves in a profound promise from the Scriptures. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. And also, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10, the Bible assures us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Today, I am here to encourage you that in the ocean of life's uncertainties, this divine assurance serves as our steadfast anchor reminding us that no matter what, we should trust in the Lord, we are never alone, and that God's strength is always available to us. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My dear friends, let this be a moment of divine awakening for each of us. The trials we face are not insurmountable obstacles, but sacred opportunities for God to reveal His power, His love, and His faithfulness in unparalleled ways. Today, I invite you to open your hearts and minds to the transformative truth that the God who spoke the heavens and the earth into existence is deeply invested in your personal journey even in its most challenging chapters. I urge you to embrace this heavenly assurance and let it strengthen your spirit as we explore the boundless depths of God's grace and provision. Let us explore seven essential truths that will help us to trust God in hard times. Number one, God is still in control. Isaiah 45 verse 7 makes a bold proclamation. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. The first truth we need to grasp is the unchanging fact that God is in control of everything. Now, let's think about Elijah. He was a prophet in a time and place where everything seemed to be going downhill, fast, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel were leading the nation into idol worship. It was chaos. Elijah could have easily given in to despair, considering the widespread corruption. But he chose to stand firm in his faith, believing that even in the madness, God was in control. He retreated to Kerith Ravine, where God commanded ravens to feed him. He wasn't in a palace. He was in the wilderness, and yet he was provided for. Friends, that's a powerful testament to God's ability to be in control in any situation, even when the world seems to be falling apart around us. We often find ourselves wanting to take control when things go wrong, don't we? We believe that if we could control everything, then surely we could fix it. The truth, however, is that control is like an illusion. In reality, God is the one who steers the course of events. So, letting go of our need for control and placing our trust in God's sovereignty provides a peace that surpasses all understanding. So how do we apply this to our lives? First, understand that God's control is total. It spans from the vast universe to the minute details of our lives. Secondly, take a step back when you feel the urge to control a situation. Assess if you're acting out of a need to play God. Remember, you don't have to do it all. God is in control. Trust in Him. Number two. God has a plan in your pain. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 declares, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. This might seem like a hard pill to swallow 
when you're going through hardship. But remember, Jeremiah, the prophet who spoke these words. He wasn't speaking from a place of comfort or ease. He himself was going through great suffering. He had been tossed into a dungeon. He had been ridiculed, and he had wept for his nation. Yet, he held onto the belief that God had a plan for his life, a plan that could bring peace and offer a future filled with hope. My friends, this wasn't just optimism. Jeremiah had a revelation of God's character. He knew that God was not just a God of justice, but also of compassion. He understood that God's plans are to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us hope and a future, even when everything seems to be falling apart. Sometimes our trials come to refine us, to shape our character, and to direct us towards God's intended path for us. It's like gold being refined by fire, removing the impurities, and bringing out its true brilliance. Trials have a way of stripping away the non-essentials, helping us to see what truly matters. And often, it's in those low points, those moments of pain, where we hear God most clearly. So, what should you do when you find yourself deep in hardship? You start by anchoring yourself in God's promises. Open the Bible. Revisit stories where God turned things around for His people. Recall times in your own life when God pulled you through. Rewatch the encouraging videos on our Daily Jesus devotional YouTube channel. Build a strong foundation of faith that will sustain you in challenging times. Jeremiah did this by clinging to the promises of God even when he was at his lowest. You can too. Number three, never underestimate the power of prayer. James 5, verse 16, emphasizes the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Prayer is not just a ritual or an obligation. It's our lifeline to God. Think about Peter, who was imprisoned and scheduled for execution. The situation seemed hopeless. What did the early church do? They didn't plan a protest. They didn't bribe the guards. They prayed fervently. Miraculously, Peter was freed from prison. An angel of the Lord led him out, and the iron gates opened on their own. This was no coincidence. This was the power of prayer in action. My friends, we may not be imprisoned like Peter, but we all have our chains. Sometimes, we all have circumstances in our lives that seem insurmountable. At times, we all have prison guards and iron gates that hold us back. But often, we underestimate the power of prayer. We reduce it to a wish list we present to God, forgetting its transformative power. Prayer aligns us with God's will. It invites divine intervention into our circumstances. It's the means by which heavenly resources are activated on our behalf. So when you find yourself up against a wall, remember that prayer is not just your last resort. It should be your first response. Number four, remember you are never alone. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 reassures us, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. How comforting it is to know that God is with us in our trials. Let's look at the story of the prophet Elisha and his servant, who were surrounded by an army. The servant was terrified, but Elisha saw something the servant didn't, an army of heavenly hosts surrounding them. Elisha knew something crucial. Even when it feels like we're surrounded by problems, we're actually surrounded by God's presence. We're encircled by His love, His protection, and His mighty power. When you feel isolated or outnumbered, it's easy to lose sight of this greater reality. But remember that your perception isn't always the full picture. Like Elisha, 
we need spiritual eyes to see that we're not alone. So how do we gain this spiritual sight? It comes through a relationship with God, through prayer, worship, and diving into His Word. We have to be proactive about inviting God into our lives and then take the time to actually listen. I will share a quick testimony with you. I remember a time in my life when I was going through a difficult period and I had a dream that left a lasting impression on me. In that dream, I looked up to the sky and saw it filled with hosts of angels. The heavens were brimming with these celestial beings. What do you think happened when I woke up, after I woke up and processed the dream? My faith and confidence in God soared. That dream served as divine assurance that those who are with me are more than those that are against me. So if you find yourself anxious or fearful, take that as a signal to pause and invite God into the situation. You'll find that His presence can turn even a battlefield into a sanctuary. Number five, your faith is being strengthened. James 1 verse 3 states, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Our faith is like a muscle. It grows stronger with exercise. In the Bible, there's a story often overlooked, that of the prophet Hosea. He was told by God to marry a prostitute named Gomer, who repeatedly left him. Yet, Hosea continued to remain faithful, representing a beautiful but heartbreaking image of God's love for His people. In our difficult times, our faith is put to the test, just like Hosea's. We may question God's presence, His love, or even His existence, but it's during these times that our faith has the potential to grow the most. When everything is going smoothly, it's easy to say we trust God, but the real test of our faith comes when life is challenging and the road ahead seems uncertain. God allows trials, not to break us, but to strengthen our faith. The process isn't comfortable, but the end result is a faith that's solid, resilient, and deeply rooted in Christ. To build this faith, start with small steps. Trust God in the little things. So when big challenges come, your faith will be steadfast and unshakable. Number six, His peace is available. Philippians 4 verse 7 declares, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Peace my friends, is not the mere absence of conflict, but the presence of God in the midst of chaos. Often, we think that a life of peace means a life devoid of problems, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Biblical peace transcends understanding and worldly definitions. Think of the Apostle Paul and Silas, who were wrongly accused, beaten, and thrown into prison. In the depths of that prison, they sang hymns and praised God. They exemplified peace that defies logic. In circumstances where others might break, they were unbroken. Why? Because they knew that the presence of God was stronger than the walls that confined them. As they praised, an earthquake broke open the prison doors. Their peace was so profound that it broke physical chains. How do we experience this kind of peace? By being in God's Word, by prayer, by living a life that honors Him, and most importantly, by relinquishing control. My friends, we often find it hard to experience peace because we're desperately trying to control outcomes that are simply beyond us. The moment we surrender to God, acknowledging that He is in control, that's when His peace, like a river, floods our souls. You may not have control over your situation, but you do have control over your response to it. This peace doesn't mean you won't have questions or moments of anxiety. Even Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, 
was deeply distressed, but he also had peace in doing the will of the Father. My dear friends, God's peace is a stabilizing force. It's a peace that says, I don't understand it, but I trust you, Lord. Amidst the turbulence of life's difficulties, God extends a peace that serves as our unwavering anchor, stabilizing us even when the world around us is in turmoil. And number seven, your testimony will be powerful. Revelation 12 verse 11 tells us, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. Every trial, every obstacle, every setback is an opportunity for a comeback, and that comeback becomes your testimony. We often forget the unlikely heroes in the Bible. Consider Rahab, a prostitute in Jericho, who took a risk to hide the Israelite spies. This act not only spared her life, but changed her legacy. She even finds a place in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Isn't it incredible that God can take our mess and turn it into a message? Rahab would have never imagined that her act of faith would lead to her inclusion in the lineage of the Messiah. Likewise, the trials you face today are not the end. They're the beginning of a new chapter, one that God can use for His glory. Every tear you shed, every moment of doubt, and every stretch of darkness can turn into a powerful testimony that brings hope to others and glory to God. So, it's crucial to recognize that a testimony isn't just for you. It's also for others. Your story has the power to be a beacon of light for those navigating through the darkness. By overcoming, you become an overcomer, not just for yourself, but for those around you. Think of how many people can be encouraged, uplifted, and even led to Christ through your testimony. The ripple effects of your overcoming can reach farther than you'll ever know. What you're going through isn't just about you. It's about the story. God is crafting through you a narrative that will not only glorify Him, but also uplift others. Don't underestimate the power of your journey. Your struggles today could very well be the lifelines for others tomorrow. And so, even in the middle of the battle, even when the odds seem against you, know that God is crafting a powerful testimony through you. My friends, as we've journeyed through these points, let them be a guiding light for you in times of hardship. They are spiritual truths to carry with us, to ponder upon and to apply in our daily lives. May you find strength and peace in the one who holds tomorrow and cares intimately for each one of us. Also remember that God's love for us is unchanging, His power is unparalleled, and His wisdom is unsearchable. In the face of life's unending questions and the swirling storms of uncertainty, let these truths anchor you. God is in control, even when life seems chaotic, and He has a greater plan for our lives that we may not fully understand. We are not merely survivors, but overcomers. Let us trust God in the storm. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and merciful God. Heavenly Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are all-knowing and forever gracious. I exalt your holy name, praising you for your everlasting love and amazing grace. Lord, I come before you humbly with thanksgiving and praise. Forgive me for the times I've strayed for the moments when my trust wavered. I also release forgiveness to those who have trespassed against me. Father God, you are my rock and my fortress. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit of fear, 
doubt, or confusion that seeks to weaken my trust in you. Lord, I ask for your wisdom to navigate the challenges of life, especially in times when I can't see the way forward. In the name of Jesus, I declare that my faith will not falter, but grow stronger, even when faced with trials. I declare peace over my life, the kind of peace that only you can give, a peace that surpasses human understanding. I claim healing for every physical, emotional, and spiritual wound. Heal me, Lord, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. In the name of Jesus, I declare that my life shall be a testimony of your goodness, and through me, others will come to know your grace. Father, may you bless me abundantly, more than I could ever ask or think. May you open doors of opportunity and pave paths of prosperity before me. Lord, I ask that you protect me and my loved ones from the snares of the enemy and from all forms of harm. May your mercy and divine favor surround us in all our endeavors. Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I thank you for every heart that is opening before you right now. For those of us who are struggling to trust you, in times of tribulations, Father, may you strengthen our faith. Lord, in times of loneliness or despair, may the comforting presence of your Holy Spirit surround us. As we sometimes struggle with questions and uncertainties, Father, we ask that your wisdom enlighten our minds. For those among us who are facing health challenges, Lord, may your healing touch transform our bodies and spirits. Father, for the times when we need a miracle, may you manifest your divine power in our lives. Lord, may you lead us to experience your love and grace in profound ways. Let your light shine through us. And may we learn to trust you, especially in challenging times. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word Amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you. In the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, Hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section 
so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.